Okay, so the next session will be from Sergei Golubchik, roughly, about Meet Maria DB 10.2. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so this will be session Meet Maria DB 10.2 about the upcoming Maria DB release 10.2. Oops. Uh, uh, let me. Yeah, sorry. So uh, first, uh, th those are stickers, MariaDB stickers, the uh, small ones and larger ones. And just the tip I found yesterday, those large ones are very good to keep from keeping your badge from unlocking all the time. And there are also some ones that looks very good on the laptop, but there are only a few of them. Anyway, so <coughs> let's get going. Uh, is anyone who doesn't know what MariaDB is doing need to spend a lot of time on that, a little time on that, or not at all? Okay, so I'll, I'll go quickly. So it's a fork of MySQL, a drop-in replacement, but uh, the meaning of the drop-in replacement, it changes over time. So when we just forked it, it was like exactly exact copy, you could swap it. Nobody would notice anything, but over time, we were adding more features and fixing some bugs that my, MySQL didn't, and MySQL was adding features that we ported and some features that we didn't port. So now we say that it's, well, drop-in replacement for or like practical purposes, but if you would like to make a point that it's different, you could create some contrived application where you will see the difference between MySQL and MariaDB. For example, the version is different. You'll see, I'll talk about it later. But MariaDB, in a certain sense, is more MySQL compatible than MySQL itself because for every major version in MySQL, they make big changes that break comp compatibility. So, for example, MariaDB is more compatible with MySQL 5.5 than MySQL 5.6, in MariaDB is more compatible with MySQL 5.6 than MySQL 5.7. So drop-in replacement is depends on compatibility on how you look at it. It is in Debian since 2013, and now it's in JC at version 10.0.25. And the packaging of MariaDB in Debian is maintained by Otto Kekalainen. He'll have he'll talk about it later today. And the MariaDB is a uh, as a project is managed, MariaDB server as a project is managed by a nonprofit organization, MariaDB Foundation. Uh, by the way, uh, talk rules. So I might tend to talk too fast, although I'll try not to. And I might get technical, too technical sometimes. So if you have questions, interrupt me right away. Don't wait till the end of the talk. So, okay? Yeah. Or you can shout, then you won't need a mic. Or you can take a mic, whatever. Yeah, so who am I talking about MariaDB? So MariaDB is based on MySQL code base. And I was a core MySQL developer since 1998. Oh, and since it was before MySQL DB was created. And I'm in MariaDB since 2010. That was before MariaDB Corporation was created. Now I work in MariaDB Corporation as chief architect MariaDB. Also, I'm responsible for security at MariaDB.org. So what is 10.2? 10.2 is now about nine months in active development. So we're constantly adding features into it. And currently it's 10.2.1 alpha, which was released yesterday. And we are going to make it better very soon, like nine months should be enough. And by the end of the year, the plan is to make a GA, and then it'll be in, straight, in Debian stretch. Yes. Ten one, so practically it's for ten one it was one and a half year between the we started developing and up to the J. And then we maintain it for five years. So if ten two will be in stretch then it's five years, we'll have to do that. But because I said uh, in JC there's ten zero, so I'll quickly talk about ten one simply because 10.1 was not well, in any Debian. So 10.1 went GA in October, tw October 2015. Currently, it's well our latest GA. We do one release every month. And the next release will be 10.1.16. It'll be in two weeks, hopefully. We're actually pretty good now with release schedule, so it'll be in two weeks. No hopes about that. 
And again, I won't do a big talk about 101 features because it'll it'll need another hour, and I've done this talk. So just very quickly, just some major features of 101 that are not in Jesse. It's on the replication front. It's Galera cluster replication and optimistic parallel replication. Optimistic parallel replication means that the master replicates to slave. Slave optimistically assumes that <coughs> those events do not conflict and do not depend on each other and tries to, to, to execute as many events as possible in parallel. And when it notices a conflict, it can roll back and conflict an event and do it well later. So it allows the slave to achieve much higher parallelism than master has. So, so it helps slave not to lag behind the master. On the security front, there was encryption, and I mean d data trust encryption. So data are encrypted on disk. Inner DB tables are encrypted. Inner DB logs are encrypted. Binary logs are encrypted. All temporary files that the server might need to write to disk are also encrypted. If everything's done properly, the data on disk will never be unencrypted. So anytime one can pull off the plug and examine the disk as much as you want, there should be no plain text data on there. There's also password validation that uses different plugins, and one can enable libcorrect plugin, and then your password in MariaDB will be validated, the same rules that you probably have for your normal Unix passwords. Data scrubbing is more useful when you don't have encryption, but can also be used with encryption. It means that when the data are deleted, that's a separate background thread that goes and physically deletes them from the table instead of just marking them deleted. It may be useful if you, well, make sure, want to, sure that, to be sure that deleted data are actually really deleted and are not present anywhere. There were ex extensions of SQL syntax, that says set statement, which allows to change a configuration variable for duration of one statement, automatically changing it back when the statement ends. Analyze statement, which works similar to explain, but unlike explain, explain guesses what the execution plan will be. And analyze actually runs the statement and then shows what the execution plan actually was with exact row numbers and everything. Compound statements, then optimizer enhancements, imp scalability improvements like log-free algorithms in table cache so that it shouldn't be a bottleneck, and many other features. But let's rather talk about 10.2. So different features in 10.2 can be roughly grouped in different groups like advanced, something with, that I call advanced data querying. That's a more complex way of querying your data, doing queries that were not possible with MariaDB before. And there's another initiative of removing historical limitations, something that MySQL, MariaDB and its predecessor MySQL had for like forever, well, at least for 18 years. That's as much as I remember. And different optimizations to make MariaDB work faster and other features that don't fit in any particular group. And I also briefly talk about currently running Google Summer of Code and MariaDB. We are in Google Summer of Code for like four years maybe. And this one is, looks very successful, so it's, it hasn't finished yet, but it looks like we'll have, we'll have good, many good features coming from it, so I'll mention them too. <coughs> so about first one feature about data query, and that's what SQL standard calls common table expressions. So this is uh, one simple query that uses a derived table, or as SQL standard calls it, subquery in the from clause. And using common table expression syntax, this is with keyword, it, ca it can be rewritten this way, which is practic practically identical. It's not interesting at all, just different way of writing the same thing. When it becomes interesting, when we support recursive common table expressions, and here you see the ancestor uh, common table expression is defined using itself because select from itself, well, it used to define itself using itself. And that basically works like first it selects from the folks table by name, well, me, and then it selects from folks and itself for, well, ancestors, parents, and then again and again. So this can select all the this can select all the ancestors graph, all parents, all fathers and mothers of and fathers and mothers until the table ends. So this is SQL standard way of 
querying graphs and recursive data structures. Employees, bosses, fathers, mothers, kids, and any graphs, relations graph, whatever. This is how SQL Standard wants us to do that, and we now support it, and PostgreSQL support it, and Oracle support it. Well, and we now support that too. That was not, not possible with MariaDB before. And another <coughs> feature in this area of doing more complex queries. <coughs> Sorry, I should have brought some water. So let's, so I, I'll be using stages table on this slide and to explain it, let's imagine a complex process that consists of different stages and, some, and every stage takes some time. For example, I don't know, a user clicks on a link in his browser, so the browser processes the click and sends some HTTP request to the Apache and Apache fires a P and loads a PHP page that does something and then connects to the database and database reads some data from the disk and does something and sends the data back to PHP and PHP sends it back to the client and the, to the browser and browser displays another page and then the user finally gets what he actually wanted. There are many stages, every stage takes some time. And what if we want to see all the stages when every stage has started, how long the stage was, and this is the rolling total of how much time passed since the very beginning till the current stage. <coughs> this is the join that shows that. And using window functions, which is also part of SQL standard, one can show the rolling total this way. So it selects name, start time, and duration, and sum over the window that starts from the beginning and ends at the start time which is, again, not exactly interesting because you can do the same with the join or subquery. But this one you cannot, can no longer do with the subquery or a join. This one <coughs> displays for every <coughs> stage, it displays the rolling average that includes three row, two rows before and two rows after. So that's a, for current row, every row it considers a window of five rows and averages over them. This is something you can do with window functions. Or, for example, the user complains that this mouse click and showing the page takes too long and you want to optimize the whole process. The logical, you need to start optimizing from the most time-consuming stages. And this one, <coughs> with the NTIL function, it splits all the stages into buckets. And if, so if you look at the 10th NTIL, 10th quantil, it'll be all the queries, that t all the stages that takes longer than 90% of all other stages. So there will be mo mo most expensive stages will be in the 10th quantile, and th then you will know what stages start to op optimizing from. This is splits, this is calculates until function calculates quantiles. About removing limitations, uh, any questions so far? Okay. This, this is something that MySQL has, like, forever. <coughs> and while it might look like an arbitrary limitation, it was rooted deep into the, how things worked in, and were designed internally. You can do a self-join, like on, like on this slide, with, for normal tables, but not for temporary tables, because you cannot use the same temporary table twice in the same query. Not with subqueries, not with self-joins, nowhere. And it's kind of silly, but that's how it used to work. And we have fixed now, so starting from turn two, this limitation is removed, and you can use temper tables just as any other normal table. This extension allows to use <coughs> expressions in the default clause. So, so until now, there was only default can be either a constant or current time or now for timestamps. And now that it could be any arbitrary function for any column. Oh, thank you very much. It could be any arbitrary function for any column. This feature is also supported by Oracle and Postgres and DB2 and so on. But this extension is not. I actually Googled and I couldn't find any other database that, that can do that. So you can also use default. In default, you can refer to any other columns. So if you insert like three into column A, the default for B in the same row will be four. So 
So you can use any expressions in defaults, almost any. Oops, yeah. And as a nice side effect of this, you can also have defaults for blobs. This is all part of Gen 2. And check constraints. So MySQL used to support the support these for again forever. It always was you can always create a table using specified check constraint, and the parser was happy to parse it, and then the server would throw it away and not even store it, and of course not enforce it. And so it, not, it wasn't really support, but the syntax was supported. And now we have well fixed this properly. So now check constraints are parsed, they are recognized, they are stored, and they are enforced. So this table, if I would create it, I would not be able to insert anything in the table where A is not greater than B. This is also part of intent too. Virtual columns, MariaDB supported virtual columns since, sorry, <coughs> since, the, since the version 5.2, but they were, they were subject to many limitations, some of them are removed now in 10.2. For example, now virtual columns can refer to other virtual columns, like column C refers to column B, which was not allowed before. They can be indexed, which also didn't work until now. Also, I didn't have an uh, example for that, but the maximum expression length was increased. Number of The set of functions that can be used in virtual columns is increased, so you don't necessarily have to use deterministic functions for virtual columns. So there were many limitations removed. I have only mentioned a few. The light decimal type, decimal numbers, they got larger precision now. They can store up to 38 digits after the decimal comma. And this feature was actually, for a reason I don't quite understand, the most highly voted feature in our feature tracker. But, well, now it's possible you can use subqueries in the from clause inside views. Which was, what, which was prohibited before, this query would have, create table would have failed create view in 10.1, and now in 10.2 it works. So we also worked on different optimizations, making MariaDB faster on different levels. The faster, the best <coughs> benefits, the best speed up like for spent development time or whatever, you get, of course, from modifying algorithms significantly. So there are changes in order by, for example. In this, is, in this example, let's assume that T1 ID, that looks like a primary key, so let's say it's a primary key. And this one, let's say it's not indexed at all. So in 10.1, optimizer would have tried to order by, by this not indexed column, and that would require file sort, so another sorting pass, which could be very slow. And in 10.2, optimizer would notice that those two, column, two values are actually identical, and it could up simply order by by the primary key of T1, and then it doesn't need to file sort. It can just use the existing index, which could be much, much faster. Also, I was saying that in 10.1, we've <coughs> made a log-free table cache. This was apparently not enough. So now we, in 10.2, we additionally to that, we want to partition it to make it, well, even more concurrent. Faster connect times. There was some work done on make connection time faster, but whether you will be affected, that depends on your application. So if you actually see the connection time, which means you do like connect, run some simple query, disconnect, and then repeat again, then part of the whole process Connection time will be noticeable, and you can see up to two times speed up. That's what we saw in our benchmarks. If you connect once and then run many long queries, then disconnect, then connection time is very small anyway, so you probably won't notice anything at all. It won't, it won't be slower, but it will not be fast either. We have added some, batch, some more batching into the protocol, so one can batch many protocol commands into one, with a, and the server will batch replies as well reducing number of number of round trips. It can be done for, ma for any command, <clears throat> but more pra practical examples is to do prepare and execute in one big packet instead of saying prepare, okay, execute, okay, so it reduces one round trip. And also, when your application connects to the database, in most cases, 
the username and password are correct. In most cases, you don't get an uh, incorrect password because everything's hard coded anyway, somewhere in your application. So it makes sense not to wait for server acknowledging the password, but just send username, the password, and the first statement that you want to do in the first packet, and the server will either execute it and send the rep reply right away, or it'll say incorrect password, whatever. But it also says one round trip. And I don't have any scientifically good benchmarks for that. We have done only some simple non-scientific benchmarks. And we'll have better results, we'll blog about it. But we did see some uh, huge speed up because of that as well. And there were many other statements, any other extensions that <coughs> are either done or we are currently working on and they are ready to be pushed. So JSON functions, data type plugins that allow to, well, write plugin for data types. And the first three will be UID data type, APV6, APV4 data type, and JSON data type. And this is a simple feature that surprisingly was requested many times. And well, you, you can specify, tell the server to return any version thing you want. And why is it needed? Because there are quite a few applications, it turns out, that do not uh, support MariaDB. And the, the vendor does not want to support MariaDB. Security scanners that complain that <clears throat> the version of MariaDB, if you compare, compare 5.6 and 10.2 10 as a strings, then 10.2 will be less than 5.6. So, because one is less than five. So they'll complain that it's too old version that has too many security vulnerabilities. Or, for example, MySQL Workbench, I believe, it checked the version to see what features you support. And if it's less than 5.6, it says that you don't have this and this performance schema tables and that it won't allow you to run this data, to run these queries and won't show you these pages. So again, <coughs> the, in the ideal world, the users would complain to vendor and the vendor would fix that. And we actually tried that, it didn't work, so we finally, had to, to, to implement this workaround so that our users, those who wanted, could hack around the unsupportive vendors. And now what we have in the Google Summer of Code. We have, we actually had 10 students, <coughs> not all of them for the server, but those who were for the server, they're actually pretty good. And we will have, I would estimate that out of five bullet points in here, we'll have at least four features pushed. That's what I pre predict. And those features are, so no paid collation means, so SQL standard <coughs> supports or dictates two different types of collations, two different ways of comparing strings. There are paid, paid space collations, which means if you compare two strings of different lengths, the shorter one will be paid with spaces to the length of the longer one. And this is how MariaDB currently works. Every now and then users ask us to support no paid collations where the shortest string is not padded with spaces. And this is part of the Google Summer of Code and so far it looks good so we will probably have it in. And yeah, we have create, create function where one can create a function in SQL and then call it from select and other queries just like any normal function. And there's another Google Summer of Code project to create uh, to implement create aggregate function statement so that one could create aggregate functions in SQL just as well. This is non-standard, SQL standard doesn't support it. Every database does it, does it differently. So there's no standards about that. Arbitrary long unique constraints. MariaDB has, I think pretty much every database has a limit <coughs> on the maximal key length, length of the index, which makes perfect sense because the index is just a help for the optimizer to execute the query faster. And key is needed to be able to distinguish between rows. And starting from the certain length, keys stop being, loses its discriminative power, and short keys is as good for distinguishing between rows as the long one. But it takes lo more space on disk, and it takes more time to read. So for optimizing the queries, there's certain key length in which it makes no sense to, go, to have longer keys. And that's why we don't support that. On the other hand, unique constraints, they are not just help to the optimizer, they are actual constraints, logical constraints on the data. And for those logical constraints, it may, may, can make perfect sense to have very long constraints. For example, I don't know, if you upload your five gigabyte movie on Dropbox five times, 
it'll do the duplication. It'll store this file once, and other three will be remembered like it's the same file. So sometimes it makes sense to do to have unique constraints over very large data, and we will impl But because unique constraints was implemented just as a regular key in MariaDB, it wasn't possible, and now we are removing this limitation. And in turn two, it looks like we will have unique constraints which uh, could be of arbitrary length. Invisible columns is something that is very similar to what Oracle has. You can mark any column in the data in the table as invisible, and then if you do select star, it won't be there. If you do insert without column names, you won't insert into it. But if you mention it by name, they, then you will see it. And why it is needed? If you have an old application that you cannot really change, but you want to extend the table for some, I don't know, put a timestamp to, to, to keep the track the time, or, do, or extend it slump somewhat, then you can add an invisible column. This application will not see it, but your specific queries will see it. And there's another type of invisible columns if those that you do not create explicitly. For example, like row ID, it's kind of a column in the table, but you don't see it if you look at the table structure. You don't see it if you do select star, but if you mention it by name, you will see it. So it's another kind of invisible columns. So we will have both. <coughs> and the last feature, which is Google Summer of Code, but it's practically done, so it's, well, as good as already in. It needs a bit more explanation. <coughs> so this is a de derived table, de it's a derived table, it's subquery in the from clause. And normal, there are two ways of executing it. For, for the views and for derived tables, it's the same logic. It can be merged into the main query, and then it'll basically disappear as an individual query. It'll be part of the main query. Or it can be executed separately. Result is stored in the temporary table, and then this temporary table is substituted in here. And this particular example, it has a group by, so it cannot be merged. So it will always be executed in a temporary table. But if you look at the where condition, this where condition can be actually moved inside the parentheses and executed together with the inner query and stored in the temporary table as well. And in particular, th this condition seems to be very limiting. So it'll, if it will be executed as a part of the inner query, the inner query will be much, much faster. It will take much, much less time on to execute and much, much less space on disk. It will have a lot less rows than if you do that without a condition. Now, this task is about moving these conditions <coughs> inside the non-mergeable views on and non-mergeable direct tables. It, it's expected to provide great benefits for the cases when the query cannot be merged. So merging is ideal, but if it cannot be merged, it's basically the second best thing we can do to optimize those kind of queries. But yeah, so that was about Google Summer of Code, but you don't need to wait for Google Summer of Code. You don't need to, part of it, you can contribute anytime, and you can, <coughs> you can contribute with the code. So we are on GitHub, GitHub slash MariaDB slash server. Slash server, you can fork it and hack away and submit full requests. <coughs> we have a knowledge base which is wiki-like, and you can edit knowledge base, you can contribute pages there, you can correct mistakes there. You can report bugs at zero.mariadb.org. Or you can hang, on, uh, hang around on IRC and help people on MariaDB, MariaChain on Freenode or on MariaDiscuss mailing list. <coughs> or the simplest, way, the simplest way to help us that will only take half a minute is to put enable feedback into your my.cnf. This is similar to, to Debian, to Popcorn in Debian. <coughs> it will enable feedback plugin that will once a week send us uh, anonymized statistics about how you use MariaDB. What exactly it will send, it's in the knowledge base. You, ca you can see and you can prove, I can prove that it's anonymized, that it doesn't send anything that we don't say it does. And then it will help us to make a more informed decision of what we need to work on, what we need to optimize, what queries are important, and what we do not need to waste our time on. What features are, say, nobody uses and can be removed, or what features cannot be removed. Yeah. Questions? Anybody have any questions?
questions? Well, then I have a question. Now, you mentioned about the um, explain thing, that the plan would be explained and now would analyze. Is it always the same plan, but you get the additional um, it's numbers, or can it be a different plan on, it the, on the way? It can be. So every time when, uh, in most cases, when it should be the same, mm -hmm. in some cases, when it's not the same, we would consider it a bug, and we would fix explain to show the same plan. But sometimes <coughs> there are some decisions that are made on the way when the query is being executed. And this is explained simply cannot do. Any other questions? Should check on IRC, but I don't think. Okay, so if there's no more questions, then Let's thank the speaker. I think there will be another database session in here after this one. Yeah.